This morning, we're going to be working Sky Blue OB Peacock, according to our trusty database. This is the 300 gallon breeding vat, and you can see there's a male and a cluster of females at the back. We've been working with this strain since 2005. Hurricane Claudette crushed this greenhouse when we built Greenhouse 2, moved the survivors over. No, there weren't a lot of them, so we had to, to get fish. We got a, a box of mixed peacock, OB peacocks from a Florida fish farm, and that started color selecting. And this is one of the colors. It has interesting genetics, and one of these days I'll set up a board and show what the genetics look like on it. It requires several genes to get this color pattern. Normally, we would have five 55 gallon vats plus a 300 gallon breeding vat. We only have four. We have a vat of small juveniles, a vat of larger juveniles, a vat of males and a, uh, for sale, and a vat of females for sale. What we're missing is what we call a BRU, breeder unsexed vat. Those are three to four inch fish that aren't fully sexable. And we hold those to pick replacement breeders as necessary. Some of the older females occasionally die. And uh, sometimes I'm changing on this. In fact, on the, later on, I'll talk about this strain. I'm changing how I select for the females in it. We end up with a lot of, of gold OBs out of this strain. And I figured out why. And I know how to select females that will fix that problem. Okay, so Susie will be filming us working on these fish. Us being Kate and Skyler, our two new employees. The dogs will be helping. This is Sunshine. Has cobwebs on her head. And then Mila has a, that's the equivalent of an ankle bracelet. Uh, we can to wander off. So that has GPS and... And unfortunately, it can't deliver a, a shock, but it does. You can deliver an annoying noise that I'm not sure that she's going to care about. Anyway, we'll be working these fish. Skyler and Kate did the adult male vat and the adult female vat. And I've sorted these. These are some. I'll talk about females later. I've got these two females, groups of females separated because I'm going to uh, cho start choosing some new breeders. Same thing over here. These are, this bucket has some females I want to look at again. This bucket has uh, females I don't want to use. And then those three buckets have some males. Those are some, a couple gold males. These are some blue OBs and sky blues I'll talk about in a minute. And those are sky blues that are going to go back. These are little fish that we'll, we'll call BRUs along with these two over here. We still have the small juvenile and large juvenile vats to do, and of course the 300, but I want to start putting males up to reduce stress on the fish and females that I don't want to uh, use in breeding. Okay, Kate is going to do harvesting the larger juvenile than my 55 was taking out the Sifflet Hotel, that we put in there so let them hide. He's turning off the water valve. And now he's floating the net and crest. That's and a good amount. That. Pretty big to know. You know, another sound dirty she is. Uh, we can't, standing like that, who clean me in the green house. And like me, I'm always clean. That's like quite a few. How many, what the uh, labels say on there? Because he's 83. 83. Okay. Then. Looks like they got and did. We're running way behind on doing fish to throw where we caught staffs until Tate and Skyler came on a couple of weeks ago. He had trying to catch his fish with a new fairly good size. They went in there, there were two to three inch fish. Tate, and she doesn't get any in a neck. I set up the side thing. Okay, I think she's near in your end of the area. These nets are pretty efficient when um, that size tanks. I see they're rounded. Okay, one more, then set up the scythe and... All right, that's a good amount. Go ahead and set the scythe and nothing. Normally, we're siphoning this through a, a coarse net. But yeah, I'm going to be fish big enough to go in you know, through the scythe. And There's not a net around you. You don't need to. There could be. Okay, that will siphon down, and then she'll come back and get only the remaining fish and clean the vat, and we'll take these up and sort them. 
<laughs> okay, go ahead and uh, sort those fish. Okay, Skylar is getting ready to net out the small juveniles, which is taking out Sickwood Hotel, and then she's going to start netting. And since you've seen the netting process, once she starts, we'll terminate this and let her finish her work. She's got a bucket of clean water down there. See if she can catch fish. She has a bunch of fish. Okay, we'll let Skylar finish her task. Wave to the camera, Skylar. Right, right, wave. Kate and Skylar are getting ready to break down this 300 grading bat has the sky blue OB peacocks. They're taking out and plant first. Is there any Nahas in there? Yep. Yeah, they, they're, we're purging Nahas, Gepi grass, Nahas fences out of the 300 gallon bats because it interferes too, too much with, with feeding. But don't worry about sorting it. Just we're going to throw all that away and just use form order in there, which is a lot easier to control. So they're going to take out the plant and they're going to take out the, there are four sets of cichlid hotels hanging on the side of the vat. They're going to take those out and then they'll take out the cages. This was the first one they're taking out and she'll check to make sure no fish are stuck in it. You see the amount of mulm in there. Okay, Skyler, go ahead and get the hotels off the side first and try to get all the Nahas off those. You can do that later. Okay, then they're going to take the fry cages out. You can see it in the back of the vent, the cichlids, increasingly difficult to them because of the mind. Okay, so they're going to end up taking everything out, netting out the fish, then we'll clean the vat and go through the breeders. This cichlid vent also is a breeding vat for red tuxedo sword tails. So we'll be sorting those out too, picking the ones that are going to go back in for breeding and the ones that are going to go to the sale vat. Okay, we'll be back in a while. Okay, Skylar is up at the front sorting the first bucket of fish that were netted out. I'm going to net some more, then I'm going to start netting out the mom, and I'll talk about that as I get into it. First, I'm going to try to swoop the ball to the mom at the bottom and get almost nothing with a little bit of a lot of fish in there. See if I can outsmart them. Okay, there's a couple males and a couple of females. And I'll get a few more, then Kate can take them up. And you can see the Nahas in there, the Guffy grass. You're purging that out of 300. It's just a pain to have in there. Unlike formwork, it grows from the bottom up. Formwork floats. Oh, see so if you zoom in on that, that's a diving spider. And it's a female and she's care. She has her egg case. They eat some fish, but not that many. They get mostly gutter fish anyway. As I get diminishing returns on this, I'll switch to getting the mom out. We'll show you some of that and then we'll let. Okay. Okay, you can take that bucket. You, I'll bring in another bucket of water. Or I'll get it in mine. You'll get it? I got it. Who's Get some clean water here. You can see the mom and the water column now clouding it. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I, I do this with a pattern trying to cover the bottom. Yeah, right, see what we get here. You can see there's an adult sick load. Get her out if she cooperates. There's another one. Sword tail. Oh, we've we'll got a male. Okay, I don't feel any big fish. I'm going to, nope, there's a female. What I'm going to do is try to get any fish out. And they're not going to be close, but not worry too much about it because I'll be pouring this off a little bit later to collect any fish. Okay, let me show you this. Then I'm going to add some water to that so any fish can fry. This is the mom that collects at the bottom of the vat. And... There's a company, because this is a child-friendly channel, I'm not going to, to say it is fish, S-H apostrophe T.com. And they sell that mound for $300 a gallon. So I'm considering 
selling fresh mold. It's used by, apparently used in aquaponics and, and also if it's soil additive, then judging from their website, their build market is like marijuana growers. Anyway, I've added a couple gallons of water to this bucket and mom, many fish will swim up at the top and I can harvest them. And I'm going to continue getting mom out of there and cut, catching any fish I see a thing on the air. She just became a gutter fish, sump fish. Uh, kind of annoying. But she didn't do it. But I'm going to continue getting fish out, getting the gunk out. Then I'll set up siphons to siphon this down. And we'll get it set back up after I select breeders. Okay, I've gotten mom out of the... There's still some. You can see some on the bottom, but it's only about an inch thick. Beans, one, two, three, four, looks like nine buckets are about three to four gallons full of mom with some water on top to them. See the little fry I'll be pouring back in uh, to the vat. There are quite a few fry left, both swordtail, guppy, and cichlid in there. We try not to get the little ones. Uh, they don't survive well. If that company I talked about earlier gets $300 a gallon, I'm wealthy. This is uh, probably around 40 gallons of it. Anyway, we're going to set this vat back up. Um, putting in a fry cage. It's a cylinder with a bottom with legs on and PVC legs on it. Gives the fry a place to hide. We put two of these in each vat. Kind of placed like that. Then we put they were uh, hotels are. There's one of them. It looks like this one has one. We then hang these hotels on the side. This is craft wire, which is great because it doesn't rust. It stays flyable. Okay, Susie wants me to turn the water on. I'll, I'll turn the water on. Call this fish yoga. I get all my stretching leaning across these vats. Okay, so I'm putting these hotels around. Gives both fry and females place to hide. Okay, now I'm going to put some plant in there. Let me go here and step that that way. Okay, I'm just going to take some of this hornwort, throw a chunk back there, put some in. Each of the cages, a little bit more over here. Now, earlier, which you didn't get to see, I got the two Tlacostomus out of here, out of that 300 we're filling, and I put them in this cage. A oh, one liability of these cages, sort, some sword tails get stuck in. Mela, Mela, come in. You want a fish? Extensive sushi. See, here's another one. Did the same thing. Here we go, Mela. Only sword tails do that. I don't, I'm not quite sure why. Okay. Might be shape of the head. Okay. Here, here's one of the Placostomus. Nice female. Drop her in there. Another female. Okay. We keep Placostomus in the bats to control algae. Okay. Um, um, we polyculture mystery snails with them. Most of those are up at the front, but I'm going to toss those three in there. Now what I'm going to do is Carefully four off these mom bats. Oh, and so here's a nice red tuxedo sword, which we'll polyculturing with them, so we want that one back in there. Well, I'll show you some breeders in a minute. Okay, what I'm going to do, I will add water to that and let it settle for a while longer and pour it off again to make sure I got everybody. Okay, there's no reason watching me do all this. If, well, I'll see you up front in a little bit. Okay, we're processing the, the breeders. I want to show you a couple females. Note the, this one has a lot of gold body color. This one has much less. This is the type of female I like for this strain. The gold bodied females throw gold OB males rather than sky blue. But right now we have a shortage of females, so we're going to use both of these. You can put these in here. 
have 24 females in this bucket and we'll take those down in a couple minutes. And then these are some young replacement females. You'll note that there's not much gold on any of those. Let's see, take this aside. Let's look at males. We lost a lot of good breeders during the winter storm. Those are a couple really nice bigger males. This one may have a little bit more orange on it than I like. Let's look at these other males. Okay, I'm going to purge him. He's not a nice, clean sky blue. This guy's a good sky blue. This guy's got too much other color on him. He'll be sold. He's got a little bit too much gold in him, so I'm going to sell him too. I've got some young males I'm going to be picking breeders from, so let's put these three aside. If I had to rank them, this one is number one, this one's number two, that's number three. It has a little bit of orange, but I may at the end of this video do a genetics lesson and talk about the genetics of this fish. Now I want to look at some young males. I want to add it, you know, a couple males to the breeding colony. This one, I know I'm not going to add. I like him. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This guy. Here's his Let's do one more. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. You like him? Yeah. You're only a certain man does. Yeah, I'll see. He's good to your size. Okay. And these four will be good. I probably would have picked a different one for sixth to male than Susie did, but I have to let her get her two cents in. Okay, so I'm going to put these males and females up. These are youngsters. Kate, do you have a count on those? Bucket. Okay. 72 on that one. Okay, so lower than we aim for, but considering everything that happened, the uh, horrendous temperatures last summer, I'm sort of happy with it. We want to get it up higher. We do have a whole lot of little fry in the bat. Okay, good fish keeping. See you next time.